So welcome back to Hangzhou, and this is the Hangzhou Olympic Sports Complex, that main stadium here. Well, it's a beautiful stadium. The uh, design there of petals on the outside, but inside there's uh, a running, running track and football a stadium. Seats 80,000. That's part of the complex where we are at the moment. So after that thrilling men's singles, we stay with men's singles now, and it's the Asian Games gold medalists, past and present. Jonathan Christie, the number two seed, up against the number four seed, Li Xifeng of China. Well, this is a Group B encounter, and we can see that Anna Zantensen has played three matches, one, two already. Now, this is quite complicated in that Jonathan Christie, despite winning his previous two matches needs at least one game. Obviously, if he wins, then he's played a three and won three, but he needs one game to guarantee his place in the semi-final tomorrow. And to bring you right up to date, I think that uh, the uh, group standings of Group A, Shi Uchi, after that monumental effort, will be number one in Group A, and Victor Axelson will be number two. So, by my calculations, Anthony Ginting is out. But let's focus now on Group B, and Jonathan Christie, the former Asian Games gold medalist against Li Shi Feng, who won gold here in Hangzhou. earlier this year. Jonathan Christie, well, he's had a very good year as far as the World Tour is concerned. Three World Tour titles having been in four World Tour tournament finals. And here, the man who won gold in this very city. Just a few months ago, she Li Shifeng of China. Well, this will be a fifth meeting between these two players, and Jonathan Christie of what has won all four previous. Uh, but uh, when you look at the results of those four previous meetings, three times it's gone the full distance, including the last time, which was in the final of the French Open 750 and event in Rennes. 21 14 in the deciding game in an hour Black and 20 you. minutes. So the toss of the coin. You won the toss, what do you choose? You take the side. So Jonathan Christie has so chosen serve. ends and wishes to start the near side of the court. Jonathan Christie, who has very recently uh, got married, literally in the last week or so. 26 years of age, 5 foot 10, born in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta. Won gold in the Asian Games in his home city of Jakarta back in 2018, beating Chotian Chen in the final. Well, as I was uh, alluding to just a moment ago, he's won both of his matches in two straight games against the reigning world champion Kun Luwida San, that was on Wednesday, and yesterday uh, beat the 2020 winner, Anas Antonsen. Had actually been 2013 up in that second game, but only won on his sixth match point opportunity. So to Li Shifang, who will turn 24 next month, born in uh, Nanchang, capital of Jiangxi province, landlocked province in southeast China. He went up to his a career high once again of number three on Tuesday earlier this week. So it's his second spell and his fourth week in total at his career high of three. Making his first appearance at the World Tour Finals, he's uh, the only men's singles player making his debut this year. And what a year he's had, winning two World Tour titles, including the All England Super 1000 event. 
Now, he lost in his very first match. That was on Wednesday against Anna Zantensen. And then yesterday uh, beat Kunla Wutwidesan, who had been in the final in the Bali edition of the World Tour Finals two years ago. Had been 7-13 down in the second game against Wudesan. So our umpire for this one is Diraj Gunadre from Mauritius and Jesper Larsen from Denmark is the service judge. Yeah, the Indonesian coach. Well, he will be bitterly disappointed about Anthony Ginting, who started the tournament so incredibly well. Anthony Ginting, of course, was twice in the final of these World Tour finals, 2019, and indeed again last year. because we believe that Anthony Ginting has not made it through to the semi-final stage. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Jonathan Christie, Indonesia. And on my left, Li Shifan, China. Jonathan Christie, Kisa, Lobo. So Jonathan Christie, the number two seed here at the World Tour Finals, uh, getting this uh, Group B match underway. The last of the Group B matches against the All England champion, Nishi Fun. Well, if you think back one year ago, this man from China was relying on players pulling out of tournaments to get into major world tour events. Got promoted from the reserve list at the French Open. A year on, well, he started this year ranked 20 in the world. And he's won three tournaments this year, two of them. World Tour events, the All England Super 1000, won on his debut. Quite extraordinary, and also won the US Open, which was a 300 event. In fact, Li Shi Feng, the only men's singles player this year to contest. World Tour Finals at all four levels, 300, 500, 750, and 1,000. Three women singles players did that, but he's the only men singles player to achieve that remarkable feat. Obviously, Chris, Jonathan Christie has been playing exceptionally well. One, two matches, both of them in straight games. Just give us uh, a brief synopsis of, of his qualities as a player. I think Jonathan Christie, the way he moves around the court, he's possibly, for me, got the best footwork in the world. So smooth, the explosive power. Better I mean, than, than Ginting. Not for pure speed. But I'm a big fan of, of uh, his footwork, as in the, the rhythm of it, the flow of it. I'd say for pure speed, Jinting is almost not human, as in how fast he is. He's a Usain Bolt of badminton. Um, 
It's a nice shot. But the explosive power that, that Jonathan has, at times he looks so good, and I do sometimes wonder at times why it doesn't quite work. It's amazing for Indonesia having two such good men's singles players, and they've got others that are ranked slightly lower as well. They've got so much depth now, Indonesia, in men's singles. Yes, there was a time in the 80s and 90s where Indonesia men's singles was pretty much dominant, wasn't it? I mean, the first Olympic final was an all Indonesian men's singles final, wasn't it, in Barcelona? But it's, it seems as if they're getting back that sort of status. That's it, and, and it does go in ebb and flows, doesn't it, as, as far as countries are concerned. In women's singles, China is making a resurgence after uh, a 10-year period or so where they didn't really have a women's uh, singles squad to challenge the eight or so players. Of course, there was a, a ch one Chinese player in there, Li Shui Rei, who was excellent, but good to see Indonesia doing yeah. well in the men's singles again. I think it's key to having players at the top. When you have players at the top, it gives the younger players the belief, and also they, you know, they, they look up to them. You look at Denmark, and Denmark now has you know, they have a lot of men's singles players coming through, some younger ones as well that are really good, and I think it's because they've got these players to look up to. Yeah. That's why on one hand, for me, what Carolina did was quite exceptional because for her, there was no other Spanish player quite of that level, so she kind of had to come through on her own as such as in there was no one to look up to. Yeah. Yep, Perfect. finds the line. So apart from his, his footwork, Oh, yeah, sorry. What, what do you think of Jonathan Christie? I mean, you, you can't win badminton matches just on on good footwork. That would be nice if, if you could. <laughs> well, actually, not for me. My footwork wasn't great. But, um, but no, he's, I, I do see him as almost a complete player. It's, it's hard to find a fault as such, as in where's his weakness. Um, and I think he's shown that with his form as of late. He's, his form as of late is better than Li Shi Feng, because when I look at Li Shi Feng, his, since July, if I break down his tournaments since, since July, he's had two incredible, incredible performances where he won the Asian Games and he got to the final of the French Open. But if I look at others, he's got China Masters first round, Denmark Open first round, China Open second round, World second round, Japan Open first round, and he's yeah. ranked three in the world. Yeah. And that's a lot of first and second rounds. Yeah. In fact, over the year, he's had 10 first or second round losses which is a lot for a player ranked three in the world, but it's because he has those exceptional moments mm. where, you know, he's won the All England, which is an absolutely massive tournament. Also, obviously, winning the Asian Games, another massive one. Seven, three. a little earlier during the previous match you were talking about Li Shi Feng having explosive power and being a do good attacking player I is that his best qualities yeah I mean his accuracy overhead uh, when he's performed well if we look at the All England as an example I mean devastating overhead as in his accuracy and he he's very aggressive he's not you know he's the polar opposite to me anyway of someone like Narioka Narioka is very good at working the rally and building and being patient and has a very solid defense and doesn't attack much. Li Shi Feng, you know, he wants to be on the attack because it's so good. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I thought in his match on Wednesday against Anna Antonsen, I thought he was strangely passive. Of course, Antonsen is he's a master tactician. Yep and perhaps didn't allow him to attack that much. But I thought that Li Shifan could have perhaps tried and instigated, uh, you know, more initiative within the rallies. Could also be, to an extent, a lot of this because he is new on tour. In, in regards to, as you identified, he's only been playing at the very, very highest level for... This year, really? Yeah, which is a very short period of time. And mm. everything, not everything, but a lot of things are new to him. So first World Tour finals. and. Everything like this, playing it in China, it's a massive event. You know, there's an incredible crowd here. It's a, 
Yeah, I'm looking at almost every single seat is full, even up in the rafters. Like, this is incredible. No wonder the yeah. atmosphere has been electric, you know, when China have played. Sometimes, though, that's the pressure that builds on a player if they're not used to it. How do they deal with it? Oh, well, he certainly dealt with it at the Asian Games, didn't he? Yeah, obviously a massive, massive result. It's hard, though, because sometimes at the Asian Games, did he have pressure on him? And it, it's, it's how the player feels, if you get what I mean. Russ. Oh, my goodness. A little bit wild, that one. That was almost on the grey carpet. Oh, is the pressure building on him? This is the thing now. Well, he'll be relieved and not under pressure, the fact that he's got a six-point advantage here in the opening game against Jonathan Christie. Look at that. Can't even miss the doubles court. Well, Jonathan Christie is one of only four men singles players in this year's tournament that actually played in the World Tour Finals last year. Last year, of course, he was a semi-finalist, lost out to his teammate Anthony Ginty, who then lost in the final. Oh, that's a delightful block. I know there was a lucky net cord there, but that was wonderful. The intention was certainly there. And I think hopefully a rally like that will just settle, just settle Jonathan a little bit, because I don't think so far in, in this, this game itself, he's quite settled. We saw a few slightly wild shots and maybe not quite playing at the level that he played at the few days before where he was, you know, incredible. Fraction too tight. Well, if Li Shi Feng beats Jonathan Christie in two straight games, we know that Alan Zantensen has already beaten the reigning world champion Kunlawut Widersan by two games to love. So if Christie loses uh, this and loses in two straight games, Christie, Antonsen and Li Shifeng will all be level on game difference. Oh, another lucky net court. Well, we were talking about uh, nice to see two Indonesian players uh, doing so well in world terms, and both being here at the World Tour Finals. It's actually the first time in six years that we've had two Chinese men's singles players at the World Tour Final. Last time, 2017, in Dubai. That's a fabulous smash. And the two players were Shi Wu Chi and Chen Long. Do you think after? after uh, Chen Long and obviously Lin Dan, both of them retiring. It was tough for China to kind of replicate that phenomenal success that they had with those two players. I mean, you're talking about two kind of superheroes of the game. I think Chen Long maybe doesn't get quite enough credit. Having three 
Olympic medals is such an incredible achievement. Yeah. Especially having the collection of a gold, silver and bronze. Exactly. Aggressive play, Mishi Feng. Really aggressive in the mid, putting pressure on Jonathan. Brilliant defence. So the body attack in singles, it can be so effective, but you can see here, Jonathan, he's ready for it right at him. Brilliant defense. Good play by Jonathan there, stepping up, using his speed to take the shuttle early. Punch a corner, keep a high base. himself to do that because the speed at which he came in and how early he could take it, he had all the options which allows him to just hold it for a fraction and he's still early and then just punch it in a corner. The last four or five points I think we're seeing the real version of Jonathan Christie's come alive and this is the form that he was playing at previously in the tournament, he just had that bit of a slow start to the match. Game's turned now because Jonathan's now taking control of the rallies. He's the one dictating the pace. He's dictating who's controlling. Li Shi Feng's slightly on the back foot. Li Shi Feng's got good defense, but he's got a phenomenal attack. And if you can't go on the attack, gives Jonathan control of the rally. Straight points by Jonathan Christie. They've really given him a, a chance of 
believing he can get back, but Liu Xi, Liu Xi Feng is going to play like that. It's going to be awfully difficult. in men's singles. That last rally, the tight spinning net shot from Li Shifang, forcing what turned out to be a slightly short lift and therefore the opportunity for Li to play the winning smash. It's a very powerful smash, but it's the steepness and the accuracy. He can jump so high. He was provincial level at Taekwondo when he was younger. And a lot of his, uh, I think, power and speed of his legs from his Taekwondo training. And I've seen his the celebration he does, and that, I mean, that looks pretty good. Yeah. He's very no hands cartwheel. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I'll be trying that one, but... Very explosive, dynamic player. Men's singles as well with the world ranking. If you take Victor out of it, who is slightly ahead, sort of 15,000 points ahead of the rest. It is so competitive all the way from number two in the world right to number eight. And it's so important to stay top eight in the world so you get the seedings at the tournaments. Yeah. I've seen Loken Yu, number nine in the world, and he's been a little bit unlucky lately, just getting some some seeds first round. And it's a great smash. Yeah, it's brilliant. And and a yeah. wonderful way to bring up game point opportunities. Yeah, I take your point, Chris. The, you know, staying in the top eight where you can get seeded positions, otherwise you come up against a seed first round. Desperately difficult. But this has been an excellent start by Li Shi Feng. Seven game point opportunities. That's gone long. He converts on his first. 21-13. Opening game in 21 minutes. This is the final rally of the opening game. Now, uh, he's played a very aggressive style, Li Shi Feng, which makes me even more bewildered as to why he didn't do that against Anna Zantonson on Wednesday. 21-13。是啊,往前,往前點拿過了就不一樣了。啊。是啊。啊,往前的線索還是一樣,線索它的頭頂很好的。啊,線索,這邊這個風嘛,它更應該是線索頭頂。是啊。然後後場球,你看增加
啊，刚才你看变一个对角，你变个对角，人都没变过来，哎，硬打对角，对不对？哎，就是太厚了，对不对？啊，打你舒服打的球，不舒服不要打，啊。所以我们说，好吧，啊，一分一分来啊。Second game, love all, play. So Li Shifang, one game to the good against the number two seed, Jonathan Christie. Now just to reiterate what we were talking about a little earlier, Jonathan Christie needs at least one game to secure his semi-final berth. If Li Shifang wins this match in two straight games, then he and Christie and Anna's Antonsen will be level on game difference. And then, like with Group A, it will come down to points difference between the three players. So if Li Shifeng actually drops a game but still wins this match, and then Antonsen will go through and Li will be out. So it's absolutely vital. This man takes a game if he's to qualify for the semi-finals. seen the start to this second game quite different to the first so much more attacking from Christie really taking the game on he did have a bit of a sluggish start in the first I think he looked nervous don't you I think it's quite possible yeah And it does the competition we're in, the situation we're in is, you know, it's unique for badminton in regards to the, the group format and it just increases that pressure on both players. This game is so... Not quite unique, we do that in the Olympics. Yeah, the Olympics, That's European Games, but it's it's unique as in we don't have it in a lot of competition. So for, for Li Feng, he's I'm sure he's never experienced this before because he's not played at the Olympics or or the World Tour Finals. Yeah. I was a big fan of it at the Olympics. Yeah, I bet you were. Losing my opening match in the in the group, but still going through. Just a little too steep on that occasion. Way long of the back line. Well, it has literally been point for point so far in this second game.
aggression again. Over. Five, in that situation, you can see Li Shifeng, he's only got one thing in his mind, which is taking this mid-court early. He's not really worried about the back, because he knows his attack's so good that Jonathan doesn't really want to have to lift to him. Yeah. But he can't defend smashes like that. Seven. So it's so important to get good length. You can see in this shot here, you see how short it is. Lishi Feng's in front of the front rear tram when he hits this one here. You can see where he is, it's too short from Jonathan. Li Shi Feng half a chance, his attack is devastating. By virtue of the two recent shots that this man has hit wrong with the back line, I'm wondering whether the lengthways drift as the shuttle flying faster towards the far side of the court as we're all looking down at the moment. Well, that blows my theory, doesn't it? <laughs> I think the, the important thing uh, on that one, Li Shi Feng, he was kind of on balance so he could control the shuttle. The two that he missed, he was stretched. He wasn't ridiculously stretched, but he was stretched, and he knows how good or how quick as well Jonathan is. That if his lift isn't good, he's going to be in trouble. So I think he just forced it a fraction. That's why they both went out. Point in it. <laughs> Missed it. And Jonathan Christie is back level. Three straight points. Hey, hey, hey.
before the end of the last, since the end of that last rally. Point in the rally where Jonathan here, great overhead and came in so fast. I'm sure, we're going to see on the replay because it was too early, but it's just the quality of his, his shot when he's at the front of the court just wasn't quite good enough. It's really well placed, smash though, Ali Shifeng, just really awkward position at Jonathan's body. as if Jonathan Christie was anxious. Seemed to go for the winner too early. And this is the thing, if you tighten up, tense up, force it, snatch, any of these things, you're going to miss it, you're going to slightly miss time in. It's, it's not going to quite work. But if you get tense, if you get nervous, these are the things that happen. when he was under severe pressure. It sometimes looks like he's on a treadmill, no. as in, you know, he's hovering, he's, he's so smooth, and to this, he, he never puts a foot wrong with his footwork, it's, it's like perfection. Um, and it, his, his ability to recover, even when he's in trouble. I could have borrowed his footwork when I played, I would have been, well, it would have been a lot quicker, definitely, but it would have been, you know, the amount of times he can get himself out of trouble with his raw power and speed. Smoothness when he moves. attacking play from the All England champion, Li Shi Feng. And he goes to the mid-game interval with a two-point advantage, having already won the opening game. So 11-9 as play resumes here in the second game. If Jonathan Christie doesn't win a game, it's still possible that he can qualify on points difference.
Brilliant from Ishii Feng. Great net. Great conviction on the kill. And this is a situation where I'm sure Anders is the most nervous man, just, you know, almost working the maths out, but he can't alter anything now, working out if he's going to go through or if he's not. No, because if it comes down to points difference, we've got to have the match finished, haven't we, to exactly. work out the points difference. Is he going to be calculating it as it goes along? <laughs> Oh, yeah, challenge that. Then I've got the two challengers for in. Well, if my theory is right, that the shuttle is flying a little faster going towards that far end, then it is probable that went out. Yes, what Hawkeye says, indeed it was out. Good challenge by Jonathan out. Christie. Well, yeah, I always do like to see the two court officials working together. And if there's uh, any sort of a, an issue that one of them isn't absolutely certain on, then they can get confirmation from the other. That's good. I like that court officiating. I agree. I think it's integral for the sport. So, just one point in it. Now. Didn't seem to stay with the shot long enough, Jonathan Christie. Looked as if he was half uh, moving back as he was still trying to play that net shot. Yeah, and it's so integral that when you play a net, you don't move back as you're playing, only when you finish. Otherwise, you're pulling away from the shot. You're moving in the opposite direction from where you want the shot to go. Phenomenal speed from Li Shi Feng moving forward. As soon as he hit that smash, he knew where it was going. He chased forward so quick. Speed going forward there. Yeah. And and I always like it, and you can tell when a player is in control. If they're coming forward to the net and their racket carriage is high, you, you know they're in control of the rally because then they've got the options. They can push it or block it. They can do whatever they want. If you come from underneath the shuttle, then your options are limited. Brilliant, brilliant defence from Jonathan Christie. Jonathan did incredible on that shot. Li Shi Feng just couldn't quite get it away from Jonathan's forehand.
Oh, my goodness. That was a total miss hit from Christie. That drop shot landed in the bottom of the net. Time is running out for Christie. Longest rally, 39 shots. Oh, he wants the medical team on court, does Li Shifang. Now he's continually having problems with this left foot. Didn't we see that in the uh, recent tournaments, Chris? The yeah, we've seen it a few times. Yeah. It always seems to be a very similar thing with the underneath of his foot. If it's a, I don't know, an issue with tendon or if it's the skin, I'm not really too sure. I suspect it's more of a blister. Yeah. Seems to have strapping on already. I'm just wanting some corn spray, perhaps. I'm a little bit surprised if it is a blister, don't get me wrong. All had blisters, blood blisters, all sorts. But if it's an ongoing thing that he hasn't taken further steps to try and yeah. figure out a solution, I mean, a simple thing of two pairs of socks is, is a simplistic way of trying to reduce it. But obviously, there's other things you can do. You get second skin and all sorts. But the tape and one pair of socks, I wouldn't say, is a is a detailed um, effort to try and rectify that. Because I think, for me anyway, this is the third or fourth tournament I've seen this happen in. Uh, me too. I well, can only hope it really was a problem and not a tactical ploy to have a bit of a breather. The only thing is, I'm not really sure what anyone can do in that situation to aid. No, that's, that's the point. And I, I know that uh, our colleague Steen and, and I have discussed on numerous occasions, uh, do you actually need a medic to come on to apply cold spray? Why aren't the players carrying cold sp spray themselves and just quickly ask the umpire, can I just quickly spray my arm or, you know, obviously it's more difficult if it's the ball of the foot because you've got to take your shoe and sock off. But, you know, the medical team are coming on, they're not assessing the problem, they're just giving cold spray without establishing how serious the injury is. Yeah, I would say for me personally, the bigger concern is that, which is when they come on sometimes, not analysing what the issue is. The player doesn't always know, they're not educated enough to know, and just a bit of cold spray, I'm not sure that really fixes much. No. Well. Mr. Zabishova, 14, 16. You know, we've never had an Indonesian player win the men's singles title at the Super Series or World Tour Finals. Had two different players in three finals. Anything too close to him, any chance he gets. His attack is so good. You can see it's just a bit short. Quality of the lift is so important. Not deep enough, hasn't made the opponent move or it's too obvious. Seventeen. 
Well, Li Shifeng wanted the shuttle change. Jonathan and Christie said no. Umpire agrees with the server 90% of the time. And Jonathan Christie is back level. 70, all. Disappointed with that, Christy. Well, I think Jonathan played a good rally there before that. He was in control. The lift isn't that deep either. Did he lose sight of it? He ended up playing it with a bent arm, didn't he? Can only imagine, yeah, possibly lost it in the light slightly or had too many things going through his head because he had too much time of what shots to play. Two-point advantage and two points away from winning the match, Li Shi Feng. Jonathan had done so well to pull himself back to 17-0, and then it's two gifts. That's brilliant. Match point opportunities for the All England champion, Li Shi Feng. Saved. So one match point has been saved. Another two remain for Li Shi Feng. on his second 21 13 21 18 the margin of the victory for the all england champion lee shi fung 53 minutes and as with a uh, group a i think we'll need the calculator out to establish who the top two finishers are Well, he's given himself the best possible a chance, Li Shi Feng, by winning in two straight games. Uh, the attacking play that he's used so well throughout the entirety of the match. And the current Asian Games gold medalist being the former Asian Games 
gold medalist in two straight games. 21-13, 21-18 in 53 minutes. So we still have two more matches to come and the last two matches here this evening are mixed doubles. Up first is the two-time former champions Puavaranukro and Teirat Tanajai up against Chen To from Malaysia. <laughs> 